Hello everyone. Well, in this video, I am going to have a short discussion about the potential exit of LIBOR and its substitution by a new benchmark rate. Well, I know it's pretty late in the day for me to post a video on this topic because this topic has been discussed to death on various forums in the recent past. But since a lot of my students wanted me to upload some content on this topic, so I've decided to post this video. Now, before we get onto this video, a small request. If you like this video, do share it, do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload such content. So without wasting any further time, let's get on with it. LIBOR, as we all know, stands for London Interbank Offered Rate and it represents the average rate at which global banks are willing to lend to one another in the international market for short-term loans. LIBOR was used as a benchmark for many floating rate instruments and according to some estimates, almost $200 trillion worth of loans are benchmarked to the LIBOR Although personally, I would tend to peg the figure at a much higher level. LIBOR was earlier administered by British Banking Association or BBA. But then subsequently, the administration was taken over by the Intercontinental Exchange and that's why it's often referred to as ICE LIBOR. LIBOR is calculated and published for five currencies that is dollar, pound, euro, Swiss franc and the Japanese yen and across seven maturities, that is one day, one week, two months, three months, six months, and 12 month period. Now to understand why there arose a need for replacing a benchmark, which has been functioning so well for so many years, we first need to understand how is LIBOR arrived at? Well, LIBOR is actually arrived at by a method of polling. At around 9 a.m. New York time, an official from the Intercontinental Exchange calls up about 16 to 18 banks who are major players in the interbank markets and asks them a hypothetical question. And what is that hypothetical question? If you were to lend, say, dollars to another bank for a period of, say, one day, at what rate will you be willing to lend and so on for seven maturity periods and of course this question is asked for five different currencies so effectively each bank would end up giving 35 quotes which are replies to a purely hypothetical question remember these are not the actual rates at which transactions have been dealt with they are purely bank's response to a hypothetical question. Now, this is very important. Now, every major market has developed its own benchmark. Like India has MIBOR, that is Mumbai Interbank Offered Rate. Japan has JIBOR. China has SHIBOR. To the extent that even Pakistan has got Kibor, that is Karachi Interbank Offered Rate, and so on. Now, everything was going on fine till the eruption of the so-called LIBOR scandal in 2012. Although it is believed that this scam or the scandal was in operation from 2003. It only came to light in 2012. So let us first understand what the scandal was about so that we get a better idea or better understanding for the need for replacing LIBOR because one of the key bases for LIBOR to be replaced was this scandal. Now since LIBOR was arrived at by asking a hypothetical question to the major banks, the banks hit upon a brilliant idea. Why not collude amongst ourselves to manipulate the LIBOR? Effectively, the banks formed a cartel. And the cartel 
decided the rates in advance and when the hypothetical question was asked to them they all decided to give the rates which they had previously agreed upon so that the LIBOR rate which would be calculated would be in their favor. Now once the scandal broke out there was absolute shock in the financial world because the financial world till now had considered LIBOR to be a holy grail. I mean think of it more than 200 trillion dollars worth of borrowings were benchmarked to this LIBOR. Now once the scandal broke out this belief that the financial world had on LIBOR was shattered. This spread mistrust amongst the entire financial world and some of the main players who were involved in the so-called fixing of LIBOR were Citibank, HSBC, Barclays, Deutsche Bank and JP Morgan. Once the scandal broke out, it was now increasingly felt that you know LIBOR should exit and make way to a new benchmark. Now changing LIBOR you should understand is not a very easy thing to do because a whole lot of loans are benchmarked to this. So in 2014 the Fed convened a committee which was called as the Alternative Reference Rate Committee or referred to as ARC to come up with suggestions for a new rate. And after three years of deliberation ARC comes up with a suggestion of a new benchmark to replace LIBOR which is the Secured Overnight Financing Rate or SOFR. Now shortly after coming out with the recommendation, the Fed starts publishing the SOFR on its website in April 2018 and Fannie Mae, the government owned housing mortgage institution becomes the first institution to issue an instrument which is linked to this new benchmark that is SOFR and subsequently Barclays became the first bank to issue a paper benchmark to this new reference rate SOFR. So now let us understand what is this SOFR? How is it arrived at? Now the most critical point to differentiate between LIBOR and SOFR is that unlike LIBOR which is based on a hypothetical question, SOFR is based on actual transactions which have taken place in the overnight treasury repurchase market. It is a broad measure of the cost of borrowing overnight money which is collateralized or backed by treasury securities. Therefore, SOFR is based on data from actually executed trades rather than on estimated basis which was LIBOR and therefore one can reasonably presume that it would be difficult to manipulate SOFR like the way LIBOR was manipulated. The secured overnight financing rate or the SOFR is a rate which is calculated and published by the US Federal Reserve at around 8 a.m. New York time and is based on transactions which have taken place on the previous working day. So now we come to the most important question. Is SOFR the cure for all ills of LIBOR? Well that is something that needs to be seen. Of course it does remove one particular weakness of LIBOR that is LIBOR was purely based on a hypothetical scenario whereas SOFR is based on actually executed trades. But will SOFR be able to provide longer term rates like LIBOR? For example LIBOR could give us the 6 month and the 12 month rate. Will SOFR be able to give us those kind of rates? Now that is something which remains to be seen because currently the CME that is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange publishes software for one month, three month and six month period. 
so we still need to see how the longer term rates would evolve another cause of concern is how will the shift actually take place because as on december 2016 it was estimated that only 80 percent of the loans in existence as on december 2016 would have matured by december 2021 now december 2021 was supposed to be the transition date but whether the entire market would be able to transition to the new benchmark rate by 2021 is anybody's guess my call is that possibly we are looking at 2023 for a full transition if at all that happens now what happens to the current loans which are already benchmarked to LIBOR well in most of these contracts there is a clause which is called as the fallback language but then the problem is this fallback language only covers a situation where there are temporary lapses in publishing of LIBOR for example a computer glitch these fallback languages do not provide for the suspension of the benchmark totally but banks have now been instructed to have a stronger fallback language in the contracts which can provide for the entire substitution of an existing benchmark to a new benchmark well in such a situation it is quite possible that both the benchmark could coexist for a particular period of time before the software entirely takes over LIBOR. Well, whatever be the scenario, it promises to be quite an interesting period till 2023 to see how the markets develop and how the new benchmark entrenches itself into the market. That's all for this video. Hope you found this helpful. Stay safe, stay healthy and ciao.